Welcome. Your newscaster this week is Ray Sheath. Every Monday, you will be able to listen to a newscast where we take an issue of the week and offer what an alternative approach would look like in a genuinely democratic politics and in an economy that serves everybody. And so for our third newscast, we are discussing Scotland and the impact it is having on everybody in the UK. If anything demonstrates that our political systems are broken, not fit for purpose and lacking in creativity and imagination, it is surely the confusion that the rise of the SNP is creating among our politicians, press and media. The language, the fear, resentment and raw emotion deliberately being stirred into the debate is distressing. Language such as, such as the rupture of the UK, the remainder of the UK, the rest of the UK, as if England, Wales and Northern Ireland would be cast adrift. The sheer nastiness of some who accuse the SNP of ruthlessness, intimidation and vindictiveness, and now ruling Scotland with an iron fist, is a typical reaction of fear. But what are the politicians afraid of? Scotland asserting a democratic right to say, we do not want the kind of society that has been nurtured in England. No, the fear comes from the polit political classes that have power and not democracy as their all-determining gene. They are afraid that our so-called influence on the world stage will be at risk. What really matters in the world today is soft power with the people, not political and economic power over people. By discarding an old politics, the nations of the United Kingdom can lead the world by example. The people should listen carefully to what Scotland is saying. And please, do not be sidetracked by the manoeuvres now in play of creating northern powerhouses in England and installing non-democratic city mayors. Devolution is very important in England and should be constructed carefully for the whole country and not be used to attempt to dissolve the Scottish question. Confederation could be the new politics and language is very important in this debate. Devolution is a language often used by those in power to effectively retain power. And sovereignty is also a slippery word, used positively when convenient, as in the Europe debate, and negatively, as in the Scotland debate, when inconvenient. Subsidiarity, that is, allowing political and economic power to lie as close to the people as possible, is the language of democracy, and there is much to explore here. In the case of Scotland, like England, historically a nation-state, subsidiarity takes the form of federalism or confederalism. It is interesting that a few MPs, new to the 2015 Parliament, are beginning to talk about a new federal constitutional settlement. But federalism does not deal with questions of identity and culture, which should be part of the debate. And federalism will not make the Scottish independence debate go away. Confederalism, a union of nation-states, embraces much of what Scotland is saying and will keep the UK together as a political unit, albeit with a completely different balance of power. It also has the potential to liberate England, Wales and Northern Ireland. In the People's Magna Carta for the 21st century, this is given the name of Confederation of the Islands. Now, confederalism needs exploring, not least because there is little experience in the world of it, save possibly Belgium, Spain and the North American Iroquois Indians. Wikipedia explores this. Essentially, nations agree that some common actions are necessary. Typically, these might be defence and foreign affairs, but could, for example, include things like energy security. But member nation-states could retain lawmaking, Scotland already has its own legal system, fiscal autonomy, political economy, currency, and so on. And a resurgent culture and identity that may arise from a confederal solution does not equate to a rise of narrow, narcissistic nationalism, as is currently sometimes portrayed. What is interesting is that the European debate can also be framed in these terms 
i.e. of nations living together, collaborating and cooperating. Finally, a confederal solution can be implemented by treaty or by constitution, provided they are living constructions. A nation-state choosing to join and to leave a confederation matters. A new constitutional settlement has to happen, but not as it is being discussed by the press, the media, the academics, the politicians and a very large number of campaigning groups. We want to work towards an alternative solution as outlined in our manifesto and charter, but one that is completely democratic from start to finish. In this spirit, our first public event will be on July the 11th in London from 1.30 to 4.30. You can go to info at 2015constitutionalist.uk for information. The focus of this event will be what actions can be taken between now and the next general election when it is hoped to field 650 non-partisan parliamentary candidates to cover all the constituencies. In the meantime, Peter Challen will be your newscaster on Monday the 1st of June and he will be discussing the indissoluble link between systemic change and the very many campaigns for specific issues such as monetary reform, electoral reform and many others, all of which have their appropriate and important place in a system of a people's political economy of trusteeship. We hope you will join us then. Thank you for listening.